Okay, well, hello there. Um, so I, uh, I actually announced that this was going to be at uh, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, but it's actually Central Daylight Time. So I hope some of you got my notification about the difference in the time. Either way, you'll get to watch this at some point. Um, and welcome to everyone who's here. Um, shoot a heart out or a like or something so I can see I can see you and um, I'm going to play uh, I'm gonna play a little concert for you um, and for anyone who doesn't know me uh, my name is Alana Lewandowski and I'm sitting in my little studio um, up in Manitoba Canada there's a slight snowstorm uh, happening outside and it's kind of a gray beautiful blue gray outside and um, I'm I'm sitting here on Anishinaabe lands treaty 2 territory and I always want to do a land acknowledgement um, whenever I'm doing a concert or speaking live um, wherever I am so that we can remember um, the history and the story um, of of who was here first and um, be humbled by that deeply. So um, I wanted to start off first by um, sort of centering ourselves with uh, a couple of songs that remind us uh, about our hearts. Um, there's uh, in the Eastern Orthodox tradition there is this great work um, called the Philokalia, and um, it is there that you will find the phrase, put the mind in the heart, put the mind in the heart, stand before the Lord with the mind in the heart. It's such a powerful line, um, and I put music to it a little while ago. Um, before I begin playing this, I'm just going to um, pause for maybe... 10 seconds or 15 seconds so we can all center um, and just try and bring ourselves into our bodies and remind ourselves that our hearts are flesh. Put the mind in the heart Put the mind in the heart Stand before the Lord With the mind in the heart Put the mind in the heart Put the mind in the heart Stand before the Lord with the mind in the heart. Put the mind in the heart. Put the mind in the heart. Stand before the Lord. Put the mind in the heart 
stand before the long war with a mind in the heart. So um, I just remembered I was going to also record this. So I'm going to push record over here. Um, I have a really good mic. Um, and uh, I'm going to also just get a good audio of this because um, a lot of us performers, we love to um, have an audience. We love to be in front of people and connect with people and have the ambiance of a, of a little theater or um, something or a room um, with great lighting and just the connection that happens there. And so the whole world has been grounded, as you know, and so many of my friends uh, had to come off the road. I, um, I have definitely put in my, my time, my tour of duty. Um, I toured 17 countries um, for many years. Um, but uh, then, then I decided when we had kids that we were, I would only go out uh, three times a year just for a weekend to a conference or whatever. But um, just the fact that I know that you're here uh, makes this different and it makes it um, very special. Hi Heather, nice to see you. <laughs> um, Heather actually is almost nearly my neighbor and um, also a patron of mine and, uh, and a dear friend. Um, so this song uh, is a ch another chant that I'm going to do uh, it is entitled Metanoia, and uh, most of you will know that Metanoia is, uh, has, was dangerously and loosely translated for many years simply as repent, and we know how that got co-opted um, and uh, became a word that traumatized a lot of people because some people claimed that they had the power to an authority to suggest that someone else needed to repent. Um, but uh, the word metanoia actually is, um, it really means um, to move into the larger mind. And uh, Richard Rohr likes to call it the big picture. Um, or uh, I, I'm not quite sure who said it first, maybe Thomas Keating or someone said ultimate reality. And, um, and so metanoia means so much more than a simple turnabout uh, from an, uh, for an individual who feels shame, which is what it got boiled down to, which is so deeply sad. Um, so um, I'm just sort of taking that back and uh, we're going to center in on this and we're going to move into the larger mind together. Beyond your small mind, for the kingdom is at hand. Move beyond your small mind, for the kingdom is at hand. Awaken, oh my heart. Awake. So I can move beyond my small mind For the kingdom is at hand Move into the larger mind For the kingdom is at hand Move into the larger mind for the kingdom is at hand Awaken, oh my heart Awaken, oh my heart So I can move into the larger mind For the kingdom is at hand Awaken 
I see that Brian has commented and he's there with his friend Matt in Minnesota and I just want to send so much love to you Brian and Matt. Um, so uh, now that I've uh, really drawn attention to um, our hearts, I really wanted to set this up so that we became aware of our hearts because um, Especially in these times, um, I struggle so much uh, with when injustice happens for me, it's, um, I get so, um, I get so moved and I get like a mama bear <laughs> and, um, and it's really hard for me to keep my heart so s soft and keep my mind um, as wise as a serpent and my heart as soft as a dove at a time um, when so much injustice is happening. I just sometimes want to react and um, have so much backlash. Um, uh, but uh, I think that when we keep our hearts present and, and fleshed, uh, um, we can still act but it comes from a place um, that maybe doesn't just cause more reactivity, but comes into um, maybe a place of change. And I see that very strongly um, in uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and the Black movement in America. Um, so much just gets put on um, the overt frustration out on the streets that you see but there's so much um, joy that I see because I'm really choosing to go behind the scenes and follow people um, that are in this work and um, to see that they're saying that joy is an act of resistance. And I marvel at that deeply because it's really hard to keep your heart um, engaged at a time like this. It's easy to get cynical is my point. So... Uh, hello, Therese from Dauphin. Hello, Katie. Um, hello, Michelle. Oh, nice to see Michelle's um, practically a neighbor too. She lives in the town over. It's really nice to see um, local people engaging here too. Um, so this is a song, um, now that we've I've focused on that heart, heart conversation, this is a song um, about uh, when, when you feel those austere moments. And um, right now, a lot of people live alone and um, we're in a pandemic, a global pandemic. And um, there's some loneliness and um, so much has changed for people in terms of uh, their ability to connect with others. And um, this song I wrote um, back in 2010 at a time when I had lost quite a lot personally. And, um, but it's a timeless song, I think, in terms of um, that it can speak to anyone who is feeling that austerity um, or feeling the silence. And maybe the silence, um, maybe this song helps people to recognize that the silence itself is incarnate. So when the desert called my name, it echoed near and far. There I was ashamed out under. She looks lost and lonely Said the sand dune to the ghost 
But you find your way Make no mistake When the desert calls your name In the absence of the raindrop In the deepening dark I felt your silence all around The thirsting of my heart Well, she looks lost and lonely Said the sand dune to the ghost But you find your way Make no mistake When the desert calls your name Well it's been said That it's a lucky dark if you find yourself there So I'll thank my lucky stars And try to be real brave Just like a Bedouin child Well sure I'm lost and lonely Like the sand dunes and the ghost But you find your way Make no mistake When the desert calls your name You get to start out for the promised land When the desert calls your name So back uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, around that 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 like strange turn of events back in March, it was also around St. Patrick's Day, and I had already plunged into. Um, we were isolating as a family, and um, and all of the terminology was just starting to be used and. Um, and so I decided um, to go deep one day and um, and look at St. Patrick's breastplate, um, the deer's cry. And um, we know that the Lorica um, is deeply ancient, uh, far more ancient than St. Patrick, and that human beings and probably the whole of this earth have intuited um, the inspirited nature of things uh, for a very, very long time. And they have named it different things. And, um, and so the, uh, the incarnate nature and the intuition that we have had um, as humans, um, it's shown up in so many different ways. And so I just always, before I, I sing this, I, I want to uh, acknowledge that um, although this, this is St. Patrick's version, um, the Lorica is, is an ancient piece of awareness of the imbibed or what Richard Rohr calls the Christ-soaked universe. They may not have called it that, but their intuition was spot on, um, perhaps even more integrated than it is today. So, um, so yeah, St. Patrick called this inspirited uh, nature Christ, and that's what I call it. And, um, and so I put music to just a portion of St. Patrick's breastplate, the deer's cry. Behind me, Christ. Be 
ago um i got into that that space that we tend to get into at least i do and i'm sure many of you do um it's half the reason why i applied to attend um, the first the inaugural class of the living school um richard Rohr's living school for action and contemplation was because um i have a, a heart for action and um and uh, reaction, certainly. <laughs> and I get really, really um, disturbed, um, and I think that's okay, um, disturbed by um, injustice. And um, one of the ways that I take action um, in a contemplative manner is to, um, is to write songs. Uh, when I'm feeling like that and see what comes out of it and this was sort of a, a prayer um, because I was so uh, upset at the way uh, the disregard the blatant disregard for um, for other humans that has been shown um, and the discourse um, that has been shown the the sort of base immature ways that people are treated and so so here it is this was a, a way for me to sort of transform that what was stirring how did we get so heartless how did we get so cruel lifting up such evil by scapegoating So many wolves are in sheep's clothing With a Bible in their hand Broken hearted I've been leaving The lie on truth we stand You said blessed are the poor Blessed are the meek But today I find it hard to tell How that could ever be when the merciful are burdened And the mourners ridiculed And we bystanders stand by And play by all the rules We bystanders stand by And play by all the rules Then 
I think about the time when God emptied into you and you emptied into mocked and forgotten places too and the poverty of God became the poverty of all no matter what kings say in their fear of being small you said blessed are the poor blessed are the meek but today i find it hard to tell how that could ever be when the merciful are burdened and the mourners ridiculed and we buy Stand by and play by all the rules. We bystanders stand by and play by all the rules. Ooh, 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 ooh. So all that's left to say Is how do I become meek And thirst with all this thirsty And let go of what I seek Because the merciful are burdened And the mourners ridiculed And we bystanders stand by And play by all Bystanders stand by and play by all the rules. The poverty of God became the poverty of all. No matter what kings say in their fear of being small. So I have this uh, album coming out on November 15th called Hymns from the Icons and um, it's a pandemic album. I play all the instruments. I learned to play my husband's banjo. I mean, I should say, um, let's be fair. I didn't learn to play the banjo. They call um, when singer songwriters play the banjo, they call it the ganjo because we often use it like as a as like to lift um uh, lift the way it sounds. And I think it sounds pretty cool. Um, and I played that, learned to play the mandolin and I play piano and guitar and got really creative with percussive, um, sounds. I mic'd my studio floor, the plywood of it for a kick drum. And I'm really proud of, of how it turned out. <clears throat> and it's, um, a series of 10 cover songs by uh, some of the great iconic songwriters. So thus uh, the title, Hymns from the Icons. Um, so I cover a Leonard Cohen song, um, a song by the Water Boys, Sinead O'Connor, um, Johnny Cash, Bob Dylan. But this song um, is uh, one I'm gonna play for you. And it's actually gonna come out as a single right away. Um, and it is by uh, it was written by one of my favorite songwriters, Mary Gauthier. And I got to meet Mary a long time ago when I was on the festival circuit, back when I was um, an alt-country, touring alt-country singer and songwriter. And, um, and I think she's a phenomenal person and certainly an iconic songwriter and... Um, I always say that uh, back when I met her, when I was about 25, I, I was a know-it-all, definitely. Um, and, but one thing I did get right is that um, I knew that this song of Mary Goche's would become a timeless classic and uh, would stand the test of time. And it, and it certainly has. And so I'm really quite tickled that I 
thought to uh, record it and honor it myself and um, stand on that giant's shoulders. So. And this is uh, maybe the most prevalent song I'll play today for the times. My father could use a little mercy now. The fruits of his labor fall and rot slowly on the ground. His work is almost over, it won't be long, he won't be around. I love my father, he could use some mercy now. My brother use a little mercy now he's a stranger to freedom he's shackled to his fears and his doubt the pain that he lives in is almost more than living will allow I love my brother He could use some mercy now My church and my country Could use a little mercy now As they sank into a poison it's gonna take forever to climb out. And they carry the weight of the faithful who follow them down. I love my church and country. They could use some mercy. Every living thing could use a little mercy now. Only the hand of grace can end the race toward another mushroom cloud. And people in power They'll do anything to keep their crown. I love life and life itself. Could use some mercy now. Yeah, we all could use a little mercy. I know we don't deserve it, but we could use it anyhow. We hang in the balance, dangle between hell and hallowed ground. And every single one of us could use some mercy now Yeah, every single one of us Could use some mercy now
So I have uh, just two more chants to sing for you today. Um, there's this, uh, this saying uh, that Paul, it was Paul's saying uh, from Romans. And um, I want to sort of speak to the, t the word mercy. Um, mercy is thought of simply as sometimes today just as forgiveness. Um, or as offering uh, empathy or forgiveness. Um, but the root of it is um, comes from mercantile or exchange or transfer um, and connection. And um, so when I sing that, it's definitely mer the mercy, the typical version of mercy that we think of. Um, but also... Um, we need uh, to become reconnected. Um, we are in the tail end of the age of the story of separation, and it will not go down without the greatest fight, which is what we're seeing. And um, we are being asked to move into a second naivete right now, out of the age of enlightenment, which didn't have all the answers after all. In fact, it almost completely annihilated the beginner's mind. Um, but um, it, it hasn't um, in many spaces, particularly the study of cosmology, which keeps us all so humble um, or should. And so when we think of the word mercy and what that we could use mercy now, we need to uh, recapitulate need to reconnect um, and move out of the story of separation, which um, for, for my part, uh, uh, part of the responsibility that I see in, in my role as someone who uh, even remotely claims to be a daughter of the Christian household, we have um, played a massive, massive role in, um, in the story of separation. Um, and so we have a responsibility um, to humble ourselves um, and ask for mercy in the sense of um, this is the age that is dying is the age of the hyper individual. And, um, and we need to reconnect. And I see that coming, but it is, um, it's hard to see it, especially at a time like this when we're being asked to not even be able to hug each other, right? So, um, the last two chants, uh, this, this first one is, um, whether I live, whether I die, I am the Lord's. And that is not some hot ticket <laughs> to uh, avoid hell and hit heaven for those who did it right. Um, what that means is that um, what is ultimate reality is not this story of separation that we've been on, but that we are imbibed with connectivity, that mystery that connects us all. And so there is, so what is, what is inside is also without. And this, this bit of matter here that allows me to hug my children and to live this life, um, and to have courage, um, is the particularity that I get to be in. But what is out here is in here. What is up there is down there. And it is, um, God whose center is everywhere and whose some circumference, um, is nowhere. And that's what I, imagine when I sing, whether I live, whether I die, I am the Lord's. Or as James Finley says, um, when people die, they don't go anywhere. Um, it's, there's just no more separation between themselves and this infinity in all directions. And it is a space of love. Um, all the wise people said that that is so. So...
yeah, these are going to be sort of meditations as we approach how we are going to continue forward through the pandemic. So whether I live, whether I die, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Whether I live, whether I die, I There's this chant that um, I put music to. I actually pulled this line from James Finley's words. And it's on the album that we did called Sanctuary. And I can't tell you how many people have emailed me saying that they are using this chant at this time. Um, one person, uh, I think on Facebook, called this a respiratory crisis which it is. And um, not to say that the COVID-19 is a punishment um, at all. I don't believe that. But um, to suggest that perhaps it is an opportunity to see a mirror is a possibility in the sense that um, another thing that we've forgotten in this age of separation is how to breathe. Um, Richard Rohr tells a story of um, meeting, uh, meeting someone, I forget, I think it was from the Sufi tradition, and um, how the Jewish tradition, the Sufi tradition, um, have uh, the, the actual word, the word for, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, uh, Yahweh, the unsayable was a way for um, to actually describe our breath because this is what I'm saying about uh, infinity in all directions, what I spoke to before about whether I live, whether I die, I'm the Lord's, this ultimate reality is here. Um, and, and we are connected to this. Um, I think we've forgotten how to breathe, um, but... Yahweh was actually a, a way to the, to make the sound for breathing. Um, and someone came up to Richard and said, you know, that that was actually the description of Allah as well, was a way to uh, describe the sound of breathing. And isn't that such a beautiful um, way to describe uh, what imbibes all of this? rather than the story of separation that came about for many different reasons. Um, one study that I did was, at least in the Celtic region, um, that caused people to stop worshipping in caves and moved out into put, putting the stones up in circles was a comet event. 
and around 3500 BC, when suddenly, um, because of how devastating it was, people thought that there must be an angry God um, in the sky. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> um, and so the so part of there was beautiful mystery connected to the stone circles, but part of it was uh, a way to reach upward to the sky God. Um, and I think our time in part is about the sky God and the womb God finally coming back together um, because the, it's sort of been this binary for so bloody long. <laughs> so um, this song, uh, this chant people are using in this respiratory crisis and it's simple. It's just uh, four words and I'm dedicating this in particular to my friend Brian um, who lost his beloved partner, Warren, um, just recently to COVID-19. And they uh, used this song to pray during that time. And, and that's, that's all I'm going to say. And uh, I just want to tell you that I love you. And um, I really think I'm, I'm happy I decided to do a little live show um, instead of the regular Sunday song so I could really feel your presence. And feel free to sing this as we go, so. Every breath is grace. 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 Thank you so much. Um, uh, I'm, this uh, audio recording is going to go up on my Patreon site for my patrons. So, um, yeah, spread the word about that. That is how I get to do what I do. And thank you so much for being here.